Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a few magic cards, 10 magic cards that have gone up in price and maybe why they have gone. So when you talk about this card, Psychonic Blast, it is a blue char. So many of you are not familiar with char, but it does four damage at instant speed to a creature or player and then two damage to you. Char was considered one of the best cards and when this came out, before the reprint, it was a very, very good card. It was the only way for blue to have pseudo removal. Blue lacks removal, and that's not a secret. But in terms of time shift, there's not many time shift cards out there. And it's a unique set. It was kind of a gimmick. The gimmick was we would re quote reprint old cards, and they would be extra cards. And I remember seeing a chroma i think a chroma angel of vengeance was there with the new red chroma and i thought that was just the coolest uh, gimmick ever right but nonetheless it was a gimmick these cards are old they are planar chaos old and those cards just spike up for no reason now recently i've seen portal second aids and portal regular cards go up these cards are not particularly good but they are cards from my childhood and here is kind of why these cards are going up and a lot of these cards are older and they remind me of playing when i was younger so assume that you are a child and you get allowance of five dollars a week or ten dollars a month some small amount of money you're not going to be able to buy very much but you are going to be envious of that one parent who has a child and they give the child a lot of money because they're not responsible parents and a child was just buying magic cards left and right. And I had a friend like this. His name was Ryan. And he just, I don't know what happened. But he wasn't wealthy. His parents were not wealthy. But instead of um, sending them to sports camp or I went to soccer camp, I went to tennis camp. And those kind of were expensive. I went to SAT class, which was kind of annoying. I went to writing class, art class. I went to a lot of art classes. And when you talk about art class, it's 1500 a summer. So instead of spending that money, they would just buy him magic cards. Which is what every kid wanted, right? Every kid back then wanted a lot of uh, extra money. So instead of sending him to summer camp or music camp or art camp, they, the, his parents would just buy him a case of magic cards. And it sounds ridiculous, but he would get cases of magic cards when we were, we were in middle school. And it was like, wow, that's, that's insane, right? So... Modern day, I now make a decent amount of money. I am, I do own my own company and it is a graphic design slash marketing agency slash sometimes we build websites and we do pretty well. We do pretty well for ourselves, mainly because we produce very good, very beautiful looking websites um, and we do the marketing behind them. So it's mainly the marketing. Like if you want to take a look at something I do as a hobby, I've only put in probably less than 20 hours into it. Yeah, I would say 20 to 30 hours, mtgline.com, go take a look. Or if you can want to look at my photography hobby, these are just hobby websites. These are not the main company websites. Uh, Bitgale, B-I-T-G-A-L-E.com. And that's just a, that's kind of a, a photography website I just built from scratch in two days. So I will, I will go back to why this is important. Well, when I grew up, I really, really wanted this card, Sarah. I could never afford it because at the time, no one knew what prices were and you didn't have that much disposable income. And what happened, what happens in middle school and in high school, I come from Asian parents and they always want you to go to SAT class, ACT class. My SAT was very high. I forget what it was, but it was like a 1540 or 1580. I forget. The ACT was uh, the SAT twos were also very good, and they kept sending me to these classes. And these classes are not cheap; they're two thousand dollars plus a class. But a lot of my friends didn't go to those classes; they just got magic cards instead. Oh, no SAT class for you! Here's a box of magic cards. Have fun. And at the time, I was really, really envious of that. Right now, obviously, I ended up okay. I'm not going to lie; I make a, I make a decent chunk of money and i'm glad that i did go to the science camp the art camp i'm so glad i went to art camp because now i'm older and art 
I love art. I commission a lot of it, but I don't think it's appreciated in a way that it should be. And the the salary for an artist is just not is non-existent. Like you have to do it part time or as a freelancer. A lot of my friends are graphic designers and artists or illustrators, and it's very difficult in the industry to find a good job. I mean, the only good job title that you can get is creative director, and that means you have other skills outside of just design. So back to the story of why this is important. So now that I have money and I have much, I have a ton of disposable income. I foster dogs as a hobby. Every foster dog ha- comes with fleas and every foster cat comes with fleas. And most foster dogs will have heartworms, which is the $800 treatment, depends on the size of the dog. Then they need rabies shots. Uh, they need all types, because assuming they are not microchipped, which a lot of the foster dogs, I fostered five dogs. I currently have Snowy, which is my newest foster. My previous foster, Lily, I adopted out, but Lily was very expensive. She so had heartworms. $800 treatment on top of hundreds of dollars of vaccines and things like that. Uh, test, um, fecal test, just gross stuff. And she was also not, was it neutered? No, sprayed. She was not sprayed and that cost more money. And with the heartworms, that, pre- pre- that has complications. So I had to hold on to her for four to five months before she was all healthy and ready to go to be adopted by a family. Now, Snowy has an owner, and the owner abandoned her during Hurricane Harvey. Like, I wish I was making this up, but I work with a pet organization in my local neighborhood, and they presented this scenario to me, and they knew I had uh, had Lily previously, and Lily was kind of a similar dog, a husky mix, a husky lab mix. And so I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And fostering a dog is, you're talking four figures. I can do that because I have the income and I have the desire to do it. So when I want to buy something, right now my PayPal is suspended, right? And that's not any fault of my own. That is some hacker in China who hacked my blanking PayPal and now I can't buy out some stuff that I want to buy out. So I will have to wait. But I will take you on the journey of how I decide what to buy out, how many copies I want now, how many copies do I want in the future. I'm not this is the time I start like interest where I just buy 10 here, 10 there, and 10 here right before rotation, especially if the card's going to rotate out. There's no reason that you would buy. The only reason I'm buying now is not because I think this is the highest price the card would be at. No, rotation hurts all cards that are rotating out with very few exceptions. Even Liliana, the last hope, a modern staple, she's hurt. Out at rotation because you're look, talking about one last fo- one less format it could be played in, and it turns out to be the most popular format of that. I don't know. It's, you can argue modern is more popular, but I would still say standard is the bread and butter of Wizards of the Coast. So you have a scenario where I have more disposable income. I want these cards I don't, did not get when I was a child, right? I mean, City of Ast, I. In foil, yeah, I would buy it. Like it sounds ridiculous. Like if you told me as a child with an income of ten dollars a month or allowance of ten dollars a month, I'd just save five months for this card. No way, no way, no way. I would buy City of Ass foil. But fifty dollars, what's fifty dollars, right? That's like a nice dinner for one. And then if your significant other joins you, like your dinner rate will be free figures, no problem. Uh, next, uh, these saddlebags. All these cards I remember from childhood, really wanting. And now that I see them increasing in price, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should buy them now and then have them to collect. And that's what um, that's what a lot of people my age, I'm old, I'm very old. I My first pack was from Beta. I just ce- celebrated my, uh, so I'm old. I'm not gonna, you can guess how old I am. I'm old. I'm not like super old, but I'm also not 20, right? Or 25. So I have a stable job. I have employees, I have a stable social life, I have a stable significant other who recently hasn't spent that much money, so that's good. That's a good sign that our relationship is stabilizing. Because uh, in the beginning of the relationship, you tend to spend a lot more money because you go on vacations. I know that we went to Galveston a lot. Um, there's, her favorite restaurant is Landry Seafood in Galveston. 
Is it? No, it's not Galveston. It's uh, Canberra Boardwalk. I get those confused a lot. Galveston is kind of a crappy city where the cruise goes off. But anyway, so now that she's spending less money and we're going on less dinners and stuff, or I guess less expensive dinners, then, you know, I have more disposable income. What makes me happy are cards that I played with when I was a kid. Uh, and that's it. That's all I really want. I want to collect beautiful artwork. And I want... That's why when you talk about those paintings, those original art paintings, I'm not quite there yet. It's still hard for me to be like, hmm, $2,500, let me buy this painting, right? $2,500 is a lot of filias. Like... For the regular filer, the filer, the new one from Eldritch Moon, that's 2,500 filers. Would I rather have original painting of a card I don't really care about or 2,500 filers in a wall, a giant wall? That would be pretty easy for me. I would pick, pick the filers all day long because if I had done that with filer, uh, the original one from Dark Ascension, they're 14 bucks now, right? Like, well, it's not bad. They went from two, under $2 to 14 and I would be sitting on like, you know, let's say I, ideally I had a thousand copies of it. Well, you know, I've spent $2,000 and now it is 14,000. I would never sell it, but still it's an interesting look at. And that actually happened not to that extent with Stoneforge Mystic. I don't know why she spiked when she did, but she spiked and then I sold them all to Strike Zone and I instantly regretted it, although her price plummeted afterwards and I bought her for like pennies, like just pennies. I don't know how, so I made a concerted effort to every, every time I saw one in the store, I would buy it. Every time I saw one in a binder, I would trade for it. Every time I saw one online that a vendor had more than five of them, I would buy them. I don't like to buy from vendors that have one or two. It's really hard for me to track who's sending stuff and who's not, and especially when they don't put tracking on it. A lot of times, if you don't spend $25, they will not track your shipment, and that sucks because you're, you're like, okay, so I'm supposed to get 25 filers. I only have 20. Who did not send? And then you, you have to I used to throw out the envelopes, but now you have to save the envelopes, and you have to like, like wait a second, this... This store didn't send. Okay, let me write them a you know a review or something. But anyway, uh, I'm really interested in knowing if this is true for you guys too. Um, obviously, I am. You no, know, I am very blessed to be where I am. I have employees I love to death. Uh, my employees are all my friends. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like one of the things I interview to do is to see if I get along with this person and if we can be friends. So if I need more friends, I guess I can just hire them, right? Uh, but that's true for any startup is you need everyone to be on the same page and you need everyone to like each other because there's not that many people. Like there's 10 people. So if you don't like that one person, that actually creates this. Plus we go to Dave and Buster's, we go camping. We do a lot of stuff together. We even take road trips together. We'll rent out a minivan. We'll rent out two minivans, go to Dallas and then visit a client at OKC. It's a lot of fun, and I don't know why I keep rambling. Bye, guys.